Hello, Grace Kids. I'm JD. And I'm Sean. Welcome back to another week of our superhero series. I have kind of a random question. JD, can you remember your dreams? Well, of course I remember my dreams. Really? Because I can never remember what I dream about. I wish I could. What if I dream about really cool things? Well, I mean, sometimes I remember my dreams, but I don't really know what they mean. Like last year, every night I would dream about a goldfish and this goldfish took over the world and made everybody eat nothing but cereal. I mean, I love cereal, but I started getting really tired of eating nothing but cereal. That's, that's an interesting dream. Well, today in our Bible story, we're gonna be talking about someone who had a crazy dream and I can't wait for you to see it. But first, I think we should play a game. We're going to be playing Superpower Charades. We will take turns acting out the superpower, and all of you will have to guess what power they're acting out. Are you ready? Okay, let's start. Round one. Fast guy. Uh, so speed. Super speed. No speed. <laughs> On the nose. You got, it. you got it. You got it. You got it. You got it. Okay. Round two. Uh, airplane, um, Superman, um, uh, flight. Yes. Nice. nice. Round three. Uh, the Hulk, uh, um, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, strength, strength, super strength. Round four. Uh, uh, flashlight, uh, uh, robot arms, um, eyeballs, uh, yeah, super sight, um, x-ray vision. Got it! Yes! Thank you guys for playing our game. Some of these words, it was really hard to figure out what the motions meant. But you guys were able to figure it out eventually and interpret what we were doing. Let's watch today's story where we get to see David interpret another crazy dream. And now for an amazing true story from the book of Daniel, chapter four. King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon was one of the most powerful men on earth. It rocks to be me. With Daniel as one of his advisors, the king had learned to honor the one true God when he felt like it. Mostly, he just honored himself. Can I help it that I'm number one? One day, as years before, King Nebuchadnezzar had a frightening dream. <gasps> Call my wise men. I must know what it means. The king explained the dream to his advisors, but none of them could tell him what it meant. Maybe it just means you shouldn't eat bratwurst with mustard before bed. Oh, zither strings. I want Daniel. Where's Daniel? He'll tell me what it means. At last, Daniel arrived. What is it, your majesty? None of these fools can tell me what my dream means. But I know your God is with you. No mystery is too hard for you to figure out. Tell me your dream. With God's help, I'll tell you what it means. The king settled back in his throne and closed his eyes, trying to remember every detail. In my dream, I looked up and saw a beautiful strong tree that reached up to the sky. The whole earth could see it. It gave food and shelter to every creature. The king's eyes flashed wide as he recalled how the tone of the dream changed. But then I saw a messenger from heaven. He called out, cut the tree down, break off its branches and strip its leaves. Chase away the creatures, but leave the stump with its roots in the ground. Oh, and then he said, let King Nebuchadnezzar become wet with dew. Let him live like the animals and have the mind of an animal. Let him stay that way until seven times pass by. Daniel listened to every word, troubled. Is that all? No. At the end, the messenger said, This is announced so all will know that the Most High God is king. He rules over kingdoms and gives them to anyone he wants. That's everything? Mm-hmm. Oh, flutes and harps. Can't you tell me what it means? God had revealed the meaning of the dream to Daniel, but it wasn't good news for the king, who could see it in Daniel's face. Don't let the dream or its meaning make you afraid. My master, I wish the dream were about your enemies. The strong tree that you saw? My king, that's you. You have become so great and strong, your rule has spread all over the earth. 
<laughs> well, that's exactly right. But my king, you don't honor the one true God. He has given an order that you will be driven away from people and live like a wild animal for seven periods of time. Then you will know it is God who truly rules over everything. The king leapt from his throne. Oh, flickering flames. That's harsh. Wait. The messenger gave a command to leave the stump and roots. So that means your kingdom will be given back to you when you recognize that God rules. The king settled back into his throne. His knuckles turned white as he gripped the arms. Isn't there anything I can do to keep this from happening? Please, please take my advice. Give up the wrong things you've done and do what is right. Show kindness to those who are treated badly. Then, maybe things will go well with you. Liars and loots, that's a relief. But the king quickly forgot Daniel's wise words. He didn't stand up for what was right or show kindness to those in need. About a year later, he strutted back and forth on the roof of his palace, gazing out over Babylon. <laughs> Just look at this amazing city I've built with my mighty power to show how incredible I am. Immediately, a voice cried out from heaven. King Nebuchadnezzar, your royal authority has been taken away. You will be driven out to live like the wild animals until you recognize the Most High God rules over all. What? I'm the king! That's ridiculous! Ridi- Dri- Dri- Immediately, the king's mind grew cloudy. He didn't know who he was anymore or how to act. Within seconds, he was out in the fields, scrabbling around on his hands and knees, grasping huge clumps of grass to eat. Every day, dew soaked him. For seven long stretches of time, his hair grew as long and wild as the feathers of an eagle, and his fingernails became like the claws of a bird. But at the end of it all, King Nebuchadnezzar looked up toward heaven. His mind finally cleared. I praise the Most High God who lives forever and ever. His rule will last forever. His kingdom will never end. He does what he pleases. No one can hold back his hand. Though Nebuchadnezzar had lived like a wild animal for so long, now his kingdom was restored. By royal command, I need a shave and a haircut. The king's advisors returned to him. You should probably get those nails trimmed, too. In the end, King Nebuchadnezzar became more powerful than he had been before. But this time, he didn't keep the honor for himself. Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, give praise and honor and glory to the King of Heaven. Everything he does is right. He is able to bring down those who live proudly. King Nebuchadnezzar had learned once again to stand up for the one true God, but he might have learned it without such a painful lesson had he listened to Daniel's wise words the first time. King Nebuchadnezzar had a really incredible opportunity. He knew someone who had a direct connection with God, Daniel. When Daniel gave the king advice, all he had to do was listen, but he went his own way instead, and things didn't turn out so well. It's always best to do what God says. I mean, come on, he created everything in the world. He knows everything, so he must know what's best. So we should listen to him, but you already know that. What you might not know is how to listen to God. Well, you can try putting a giant cone to your ear, but that will not work, trust me. You could read about what God said in the Bible and what Jesus taught. Or maybe God will speak to you in other ways, in a song perhaps, or maybe something you feel in your heart. But if you still can't figure out how to listen to God, try this. Maybe you know someone, your small group leader, or parent, or grandparent. Someone who has more experience listening to God than you have. Maybe, like the king did through Daniel, you could hear God through them. Try asking for advice if you need it. Or try asking them to pray with you. Truth is, God can talk to you anywhere and anyhow he wants to, but it's up to you to listen. The one thing to remember today is if you want to stand for what's right, listen to someone who listens to God. That is today's bottom line. Will you say that with me? If, if you, you want, want to stand for what's right, 
listen to someone who listens to God. One more time. If you want to stand for what's right, listen to someone who listens to God. Knowing what God says is so important. So do what it takes to listen to him. Let's pray. God, thank you that we have a God who didn't just speak long ago, but that you still speak to us today. Sometimes it can be hard for us to listen to all of the noises in our lives. Thank you for putting people in our lives through whom you can speak truth to us. Now, please help us listen. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. That's all we have today. Bye, Grace Kids.